Kirk. And this is Troll, our 1978 Trillium molded fiberglass travel trailer. Troll stands for Trill of a Lifetime. When we first got Troll in September 2011, she was in original factory condition, although quite used and somewhat abused by her previous owner or owners. She had original factory upholstery and standard internal with an insulate, um, insulation coating on the walls, quite dirty, needed a lot of cleaning. One of the things that uh, was factory standard on Troll when we first got her was the T-shaped one inch wide molding, plastic molding, that covers the gap between the insulite seams in the ceiling and the edging where the insulate insulation meets the fiberglass inner shell. This had deteriorated quite severely over time and some of the pieces were missing and uh, we felt needed to be replaced or, or fixed somehow. After doing research on places like fiberglassrb.com and whatever other sites I could find, it was recommended by many to just heat up the tea molding in a pot of hot water, allow it to soften up and reinstall it back in the tea truck. Well we tried that and yes it worked. It uh, softened up and straightened out quite nicely however it didn't seem to install very well into the track possibly because either the molding itself or the track was damaged but within a matter of a month or two it had gone back to its wavy ugly configuration and something else needed to be done. Further research indicated that one possible option would be to remove all of the T-molding and fill the gap between the seams with acrylic caulk and to paint the interior. And this is the approach we decided to try to take with Troll after uh, first trying to reheat the, the T-molding. Filling and painting the tea molding has done a pretty darn good job of covering the gap between the insulate pieces, as you can see here. It even covers fairly well over the curves in the trailer and different bumps and inconsistencies in the inside of the trailer. While using acrylic caulk on the seams between the insulate panels inside the trailer seemed to work very well in uh, fixing up the trailer. One of the problems that we had or one of the questions we had was what to do with the edging where the insulate seam joins up with the fiberglass um, internal panels of the trailer. And one of the potential solutions there that I researched was um, self-adhesive two inch wide safety tape. It's textured and therefore hides or blends in with the insulate fairly well. It's uh, self-adhesive and it's got a nice straight edge so that the theory is you can just stick this along the edge of the tape or edge of the insulate. It will adhere to the insulate and to the fiberglass and uh, it can be painted just like the acrylic um, caulking and the insulate itself. So we thought that would be a pretty reasonable option to try out. However, it had its problems. While in a lot of places the tape edging did do a pretty good job of covering the seam, there were places where we had to slice it to allow it to fit properly 
into some of the unusual curves. Other places it seemed to work fairly well but it didn't stick terribly well in others. I tried reapplying tape over other tape and here you can see the upper layer shrunk over time. Recently I decided to try to use the acrylic caulk along the edging of the Ensolite panel and see if I could come up with a better solution. And this is a small section of what I did the other day and it seems to work quite well. Well, it may not be perfect, it's far better than some of the alternatives. It sticks to the corners and edges quite well. It holds some of the um, uh, texture that I've given to it. It doesn't seem to lift and it looks half decent. Although this spot where it's not looking that great will be covered behind um, the mattress here on the bunk. Nothing's ever perfect but I think this is a far better way to go um, to fix up some of the bad spots left here in our trailer. So I'm going to show you how to take off the old tape, how I add the acrylic here and how we fix it up to make it look a little bit better than what we had before. We're going to start working here at the rear of the trailer um, at the back of the dinette area because this is an easily accessible part. It's just a short strip so that I can show you what we're doing and uh, there's an easy place to put the camera so that we can illustrate this. The first thing to do is to remove the retainer strip that holds the rear window in place. This is a double-edged strip that catches the aluminum window frame of the trailer and keeps it from pulling out as it's driving down the highway. In this case, because we're just doing a short section of it, um, I'm just going to undo this end and we'll pull the tape out and try to keep it from getting in the way. We can put the screwdriver up here and that uh, will help to keep it out of the way. At this particular point I actually have two layers of tape. One is a half strip that I cut to try to fix a bad spot underneath here where I had done some stripping and just by gently pulling it's very easy to pull this tape off. The under layer is probably not quite that easy. This was originally installed and painted over so this edge is quite sealed with the tape paint that we used inside the trailer. But if I can get a decent grip on the tape, it pulls off not too bad. The tape will rip as you can see here. But again, try to be gentle and it shouldn't be a problem.
And there we have all of the tape off. It's still sticky in places, still has adhesive in places, and we'll have to work at getting that cleaned up. You can see here that there's a lot of the original um, glue still in place. What I should have done before I took the tape off was to mark this edge so that I would have a reference point in order to um, put new tape up so that I can mask a little bit better. So I'm going to just try to do that now with a sharp edge and just mark down the edge of the approximately where the tape was lying along here just to give me a reference point. I'm not using a pencil or a pen because that should scratch off or wash off when I do the cleaning on this. A light scratch in the gel coat of the fiberglass won't be very um, visible. So using a razor knife and trying to clean up some of the old adhesive, particularly along the edge here, comes off pretty nice. And I can still see where my mark is for the for the tape. I'm trying to get all the gummy adhesive off of the fiberglass because I want to make sure that the acrylic caulk and the paint gets a good adhesion on both the ansolite and the caulk. We may have to do more than using a razor blade, but sometimes, depending on the adhesive that's used, it will just rub off using your thumb, like that. Or you might need to get some adhesive remover, like Goo Gone or um, Goof Off, in order to try to remove excess adhesive. Just using a fingernail sometimes or a thumb with some pressure will remove all the adhesive that you need. You may notice that there's no um, track 
for the T-molding that was here. In this particular location, the T-molding was very easy to remove back when we tried to put the tape on and I felt that that would be a good thing to do because it would allow the tape to seal well and hold against there. But as you could see in the previous scenes, it didn't work so well. I've gotten a lot of the tape and much of the adhesive off, but there's still adhesive on the ansolite and a little bit in places on the fiberglass. So I want to try to get that off a little bit better. I'm going to use a little bit of Goo Gone to try to make sure that works. And to test it, I'm going to put a little bit on the cloth and make sure it doesn't discolor or damage the areas that I want to get clean. And it seems to be working okay, although it's not removing an awful lot. Sometimes it will just soften things up enough that you can get in there and rub a little bit more to get off. You also want a nice clean surface so that everything sticks when you go back to putting the acrylic on. One thing that's obvious as I'm doing this project is you can see the marks where water has gotten in and settled in the back of the trailer, which indicates that some of the windows need to be reseated because we've got some leak coming in here. Or that could be from the belly band, which is a known leak problem in trilliums. I've replaced or reseated. Um, at least two of the windows so far and uh, I believe the front and the back still need to be done. It's been many years since I've done that so that'll be an upcoming video. If it's lubricated you can also use a little bit of steel wool to help clean things up. It will give a bit of a polish to your fiberglass as well. It's got that pretty clean. We're just going to try cleaning up a little bit more up here. And there we've got a pretty clean surface to work with. I'm going to let that sit and dry for a little while and uh, come back in a bit and we'll tape it up and get started with our acrylic. 
here you can see a piece of the remaining T-Track holder that held the T-Track the uh, divider in place and here there's a spot where you can see that it's actually broken and wouldn't hold the um, T-Track in place. Now that we've uh, let the trailer sit overnight and all of the goo gone has been evaporated we're just going to give the area a wipe with some rubbing alcohol just to get rid of any traces of contaminants or um, goo and put that oops just to clean things up a little bit and make sure that our caulk and paint will stick where it needs to stick. And next we're going to use our painter's tape and we're going to run some tape down the wall where I'd marked it. Get it down nice and secure. Sometimes it's best to do a long strip so you end up with a nice straight line. Now this is not really intended to protect from the acrylic or to stop the acrylic but uh, to paint up to and give us a nice straight line once the paint is finished. Now that we have the um, tape in place. We're going to open up the acrylic caulk and start applying that. Uh, very important to note that you want the caulk to say acrylic. You do not want to use silicone here, although silicone caulks claim to be paintable. Uh, they don't always stick terribly well to what you want it to stick to and I found that the latex caulk is by far the best solution for this job. So I'm going to open this up and be back in a few minutes. So for the next, next part of the project you're going to need shop towels or paper towels, um, a bucket of water, and a sponge. Acrylic caulk cleans up with water so that's really very nice. Plus you're going to be using the sponge to texture the caulk once it's in place. And a couple of putty knives depending on the size of the area that you're working with. You may want a large unit or uh, one of the smaller ones. For this space we're going to use the smaller one mostly. And a flexible style is definitely better than a stiff version. So I've got the caulk opened up and I've given it a little bit larger than a quarter of an inch standard opening because we're going to be filling in a larger area we'll need a little bit more flow and now we can get started. I'm going to start at the bottom just following along the edge of the insulated insulation. Up here there's a little bit more of a gap so I'm going to stop there for a minute. And with the 
putty knife, just even things off a little bit, spread it around, and partly work it into the edge of the ensolite, both into the ensolite and away from the and away from the ensolite. Try to give it a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a taper down to the fiberglass wall. You may feel that you have to add a little bit more caulk to that from time to time just to make sure an area gets filled. But you shouldn't be putting too much on. Now I'm going to move up to the top a little bit and get this area. And work down to where he was working before. And I'm going to put a fair bit more into this spot right here. Again, you don't want to take your caulk right out to the tape, but you can if you really want to. I'm just catching some of the drip here, and I'm going to put that in this spot. Now we don't have to be perfect with the spatula, because that's what our water is for. Another thing about having a water bucket here is that it can be used to clean up your equipment. Once your caulk is on, you can let it sit and get a little bit of a skin, but you can also come along and just tapping over top of it lightly help to work it into where it needs to go and tapping it get a little bit of a texture on top so that it will more closely match the insulate finish and at the same time you can work it down into or towards the towards the tape and you, like I said you just have to be very light with the with the sponge. We're actually going to let it sit for a few minutes and come back in a bit and work with the finish, the texture a little bit more. Let the caulk get a little bit more skin on it. Okay, we've let the caulk sit for a little bit longer and get a bit more tack and I'm just going to work it out a little bit more You might want to get a little bit wetter for this just to help soften the top surface a little bit. And again, just a very gentle working with this damp sponge. And the moister your sponge is, the less it'll pull peaks on your acrylic. And that's looking pretty good. I'll bring the camera in so you can take a closer look at it. You might want to put a little bit more on right there. Just try to seal that up a little bit more. Or maybe just work it in a little bit. Likewise here, there's a little bit of a spot where I can work some more on.
It's somewhat harder to do this overhead. I've done uh, a strip of filling in here. This has been a little bit more difficult, partly because it's overhead and partly because this was where the remaining T-track support was that I couldn't get out. So it's a little bit thicker, a little bit wider uh, fill point. So I filled it and I've uh, troweled it a little bit. And It's a good idea to keep dampening your sponge on a regular basis so that it doesn't stick too much to the caulk. But you also have to be ready to catch the drips underneath. Make sure that you have plenty of towel when um, bowls or buckets to catch the drips. And be ready to clean up immediately afterwards. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for a little while and move on to a next, the next and last stretch. If you're running into spots where you having trouble you can actually wet your finger and just run it along and work the caulk into the place as long as you have your finger wet and you're very gentle you can work it in and then come back and texture it again And I think we're pretty much done caulking. So now we'll let that sit and dry and come back tomorrow and give it a primer. Okay, so we've let our uh, caulk dry overnight and it's good and firm now so next thing up on the agenda is to give it a coat of primer to help the paint stick we like to use uh, Zinsser Bullseye 123 it's a very good uh, primer for all surfaces and we found that it really helps the paint to stick and works everywhere we've tried to try to use it before so Again, I've got water and a sponge for cleaning up several pieces of uh, shop towel and a smaller paintbrush, nothing too big because we're just doing the edge pieces here. And we're going to try to not uh, go too far, um, basically prime up to the tape but not try to get too much paint on the tape. So the first thing we do is we just want to make sure that the tape is well sealed. This is our masking tape along the edge here. We don't want it to come up while we're working and that should be good. So I'll move this out of the way and we'll start doing some priming. I'm not trying to be painterly, this is just trying to get in to an awkward spot right here. And again, trying to get up close to the tape. And a little onto the insulite to help cover that. You could actually go over the insulate in this case and onto the paint that we've already put on just to make sure we've got a good coverage. 
and we'll just paint over that again with the gray paint. And there we go. That's it for that section. So there we have our uh, primed acrylic on there and I've covered the Ensolite up to the point where my tape, my previous taping job had been painted to. So Zinzer 123 is a nice water based primer so I can just go clean up the brushes and uh, we'll get ready to paint tomorrow. Let that dry overnight. Yesterday we put primer on our acrylic uh, caulking job and let it dry overnight. Today we're going to paint it. We're using Benjamin Moore interior house paint. This is a grade that we've used to previously paint the interior and slight surfaces in our trailer. And so we're just going to match the work we did yesterday up. And uh, it dries to a touch in an hour. And they say that it can be repainted in one to two hours. So we'll put both coats on today and finish this job up. So here's our first coat.
And we want to make sure that we cover all of the places we put primer on yesterday. And that's our first coat there. We'll move on to the rest of the trailer, let it dry for a couple of hours, and come back and do a second coat. And there's our painted surface one coat. We'll let it dry for a couple of hours and we'll come back and give it a second coat. Time for a second coat.
Now we'll let that sit and dry for a few minutes and we'll come back in a few and take the tape off. Okay, so we've got the paint on two layers and it was primed before that. We've got our acrylic seal where we used to have tape and the last step to go here is to take our tape off and see what kind of an edge we have and how close we have to perfect. Right? Let's check it out. Not too bad at all. Okay, well it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. There's a few spots here where I can touch up with a small brush and everything will be fine. So that's the project. That's what it takes to fill and paint the seams in a trailium or bowler type trailer that has the Ensolite insulation in it. Very simple, straightforward. It takes some time because the acrylic has to dry, the primer has to dry, the paint has to dry between coats. But, you know, a couple or three days really doesn't hurt. So, easy project, give it a try. Um, thumbs up, subscribe if you want. I don't know how that works. I'm new to all this. So, uh, enjoy your trailers. Happy camping. Bye.